We'd just like to welcome everyone today, whether you're here in the parking lot or you're joining us online. Today is the day that we're going to take up a special offering for the ramp that's going to be built when the mission group goes to Kentucky in June. And I put that in your handout when the dates were, in case you're interested. There is a just a small group that's going. And if you are not prepared to give your offering today, you can always give it, you know, in the next few weeks because we don't go till June and just mark it for the Kentucky mission. So we're taking this offering in honor of Bob as he was going to get the wood for that trip, but of course he can't and we have taken care of that. Well, there has been progress on the land. Signing will be this Wednesday. Yes, you can clap. This is a great day. <laughs> Of course, I must say, the Lord willing, because we've been surprised before, but it looks like it's really going to go through this time. So next week is going to be a, a healing service, and if you know someone who needs a touch from God, just invite them to church that day, and uh, they will be prayed over, and there are going to be healings that take place that day. We did attend the BG Pregnancy Banquet this week along with Carol and Jim Jividen and we heard a marvelous, miraculous testimony of God saving a life. It would take too long to repeat it, but it is was very encouraging to hear of God's act in someone's life. God's always working and bringing about his plan. And you know, it really does encourage you when someone else shares their testimony and what God has done. Next week, we're going to start a transition of two worship teams. During the COVID, we developed another worship team. And having two will give us some versatility. If some worship team members can't be here, it will be good for them. So beginning next week, another worship team will play for the next three weeks. And then we will alternate every two weeks between the two worship teams. We wanted to warn you, so next week you did not think that you had come to the wrong church. <laughs> but you know, the worship team is a group of people that's here every Sunday, unless some minor, major, I should say major tragedy happens. You know, they are one of the most faithful groups in the church because they just show up every Sunday. They always say if you go to two services, the one group you can count on is the worship team because they love their ministry. They love to lead worship. So thank you to all the worship team members. You really are a great group of people. Okay, I think that takes care of our announcements today so the nursery and kids church children can line up at the back door and a teacher will take you over to the Kids Church building. Thank you. Sometimes people say, well, how do you get your sermons? And uh, it varies. You know, I just uh, never know for sure. I'm always, at, right, usually right after church and I'm starting to think, okay, next week's coming. Let's see, what am I going to preach on? That's the, big, that's the big thing. So this week on Monday, I was getting on my computer. And my computer, I don't know what was going on, but it was slow. It was slow. It was so slow. And you know, and a lot of people say, well, you're so patient. There's a whole lot of things I'm patient about. That's not one of them. That is not one of them. Computers, even when computers are running good, they're not fast enough for me. I, they're, I, you know, they're just still too slow. But anyway, it was slow. And I got, I got tired of waiting. I, you know, I just, I'm tired of waiting on this thing. So what do I do when I get tired of waiting on my computer? I start punching things. I start pushing buttons. I just start pushing stuff. Well, you know what happens? The more you push stuff, the slower it gets. Because now it's trying to do all the things I'm asking it to do. Plus, it's already going slow. And, um... The more I clicked on things, the worse it got. Till finally, I just had to shut it off and start over. I shut it all down. I shut it all down. And I realized that clicking on things doesn't really help the process. And so, as I thought about that, I thought, well, it's a lot like waiting on the Lord. And so, thus, I came up with my sermon, Waiting on the Lord. To me, and you know, and I, let me say this before I get too far. Waiting on the Lord has a lot to do with our personalities, okay? Some of us wait better than others. 
some things people wait for, some things people don't wait. You know, we all kind of have things we can, you know, wait on, things we don't wait on. We're all different. Some people can wait and wait and wait and never do anything. You know, they don't mind waiting. You know, they like waiting. And you're kind of like, come on, come on, come on. You know, let's get on with it. And no, so... I'm mainly sharing from my perspective on this, and my perspective on this is sometimes I don't wait so good. Sometimes I don't wait so good. So I want to look at, a, at an incident, incident in the Bible in Genesis, the, four, the 12th chapter. The first four verses is the story of God um, calling, calling Abraham, Abraham to uh, leave his country and to go to another place. So the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will show you. Can you imagine going somewhere, you know, imagine your spouse. Well, we're going on a trip. What's the first question? Where are we going? So the Lord comes to Abram and he says, um, you're going to leave your father's house, you're going to leave your land, and I will, I'll show you eventually. And then it says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. and You shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Wow. Just think about this, you know. Okay. So you want me to leave. You're not going to tell me where I'm going. I'll show you later. Pack up your family. And he's 75 years old. Wow. Wow. That's quite a, quite a challenge in and of itself. Is to, to just, you know, I'm going to make a great nation out of you. I'm going to do great things for you. And then in, in Genesis, the 16th chapter... The first two verses. Now Sarah, Abram's wife, had, had borne him no children. And she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarah said to Abram, See now the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go to my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain, I shall obtain children by her. And Abraham heeded the voice of Sarai. So God's going to make a na great nation out of him. And, you know, I don't know, at 75, what he's thinking. You know, there'd have to be some questions of some kind. And so, Abram and Sarah, they decide, you know, she said, I can't bear you children, so I'm tired of waiting. You know, if you're going to have be a great nation, how about if you just take my maid and you have a child with her? Just have a child with her. So in verse 4, it says, So he went into Hagar, and she conceived, and when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. <laughs> well, isn't, that, isn't that the case? You know, here, why don't you take my maid? Okay, okay, now she's going to or now she's going to have a baby. Ooh, I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like that. In verse 6, it says, So eight. Abram said to Sarai, Indeed, your maid is in your hand. Deal with her as you please. So Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her pre presence. So she gets mad. What well, was her idea in the first place? You ever seen that happen? You know? What well, was your idea? Well, Sarah, you know, it was your idea. Well, ooh, I don't like this. Okay. So we see then on down in verse 11, the angel of the Lord comes to Hagar. She's, she's, she's left. And the angel of the Lord says to Hagar, Behold, you are with child, and you're going to bear a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. He's going to be a wild man. His hand shall be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he's going to dwell in the presence of all of his brethren. Interesting. So they took things into their own hands. They couldn't wait on the Lord. Sarah says, you know, we got to do something about this. 
I don't know how the discussion went, but you know, it had to go something like, you know, you're 75, what do you think? You know? So they take it into their own hands, and what do they have? They have a, they have a, the maid has a son named Ishmael, and we know that out of that comes all the Arab nations, who they, they, Arab nations, Abraham's their father. You know, they, they claim Abraham is their father. And it's true. It's true. You know, it says he's going to be a wild man. His hand's going to be against every man, every man's hand against him. And he's going to dwell in the presence of all of his brother. And we see that comes true. So now at 99, now Abraham, you know, they couldn't wait. So now he's 99 years old. And God tells him that he's going to have a son. He's going to have a son. So he finally gets to the point that, you know, he's going to have a son at 99. How's that for waiting? You know, he waited and God blessed him with a son at 99. But look at the process. You know, there was a time when they couldn't wait. There's a time when they had to take things into their own hands. There's a time when they couldn't believe that God was really going to do what he said. I think it's something we all can relate to, of that whole process of waiting on the Lord. I want to look at some of the things that we need to be careful of when we're waiting. When you're waiting, there's a lot of voices that are going to talk to you. There's going to be a lot of, a lot of voices that are going to talk to you in this waiting period. Could be another person. We have to be very careful because people can have motives. You know, while we're waiting, people can have motives. Why are they talking? Why are they telling me what to do? What was, you know, Sarah, she had a motive. You know, well, I don't seem to be able to bear a child, so you need to, you need to get with my maid and have one by her. She was taking things into her own hands. People can have selfish motives. They can have selfish motives for personal gain. Sometimes people will, will give you advice at a waiting time and they, it's because they're going to get something out of it. I always say when you're, when you're listening to somebody, do they have a motive or do they have any personal gain from what they're saying? You know, is there a reason that they're promoting whatever it is? We need to be very careful. Sometimes they can talk out of fear. I've, I've told this story recently to somebody, but I remember one time when we were thinking about a building project. And I presented the building project, and, and uh, somebody came to me after the meeting, and they said, I don't think we should do it. And I said, really, why not? He said, well, I can't afford it. <laughs> I said, well, I didn't ask you to pay for the whole project. <laughs> you know, but you know, in their mind, what they were saying was, well, personally, I, I, I can't afford that. Well, I said, just do your part. I said, all you do is do your part. You know, but sometimes, sometimes we look at it and we think, well, I, I can't afford that or we can't do that or you can't do that because I don't think it'll work. We can have a personal opinion. Sometimes we can have our own thoughts in the waiting process and that's probably one of the harder ones to deal with. What do I think? What does my flesh think? You know, there's a part of me that isn't always in favor of what God's doing. There's a part of me. There's a part of me that's selfish, you know, that says, well, that won't work. There's a part of me sometimes that can be afraid. Be afraid. Oh, yeah, but what about this? What about that? What about whatever? You know? What if it doesn't work? What do people think? Sometimes that's a big, that's a big factor when we're, you know, what's everybody, what's everybody going to think? What if we get our church built halfway and we can't afford to go any further? What if, what if, what if, what if? All the, all the things you can fear, all the things, all the voices, all the thoughts you can have. Sometimes we can be afraid of losing things. Yeah, but I got this to lose. Sometimes when we, when we think about waiting, sometimes we have friends we might lose or people's opinion. People's opinion. What, what will people think? What will people think? And so I think sometimes in the waiting process, we have to deal with some things. I think sometimes in the waiting process, God deals with us. 
I think it's a great time for discipline and learning. You know? So be careful when you're waiting that you don't just complain. Or start pushing things to make something happen. I'm, I'm going to get this thing to work. I don't care. You know, we have to be very careful. What happens if we don't wait? What if, what if, well, you know, many times, you know, it's like, I'm tired of waiting. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do something. I'm going to, I'm going to make something happen. Sometimes, sometimes we can delay God's purpose. We can delay the process by taking things into our own hands. Sometimes we'll go a wrong direction. Sometimes we'll get, get down a path and, and it's the wrong path. In Isaiah 64, 4, it says, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, nor has I seen any God beside you who acts for the one who waits for him. Do you really believe that God acts for you as you wait on him? You know, that I can actually wait? That I can actually rest in the Lord? I believe that he's going to take care of me. That's, that's sometimes very difficult. It's a real test of whether we really trust him. We really trust him. You know, but Lord, what if, what if, what if? Does you ever find yourself saying, what if? But if I wait, what if, what if, what if? You know? Abraham, what if? Sarah, what if? How's this going to work? God, you need our help. Sometimes if we don't wait, we can suffer disappointment. Sometimes if we don't wait, we can get ourselves in a bad place. We can go down a wrong path. We can get ourselves in a, in a place where we got to say, wow, that was wrong. Wow. You know? This isn't what God had in mind. This isn't. But, and, and I always say, you know, if you get to that place, stop. If you, if you say, you know, I'm, I, I took a wrong turn. I made a bad decision in my life. You know, I, I did something that I shouldn't have done. Stop where you're at and don't do anything because then if you, you know, sometimes when you're in that spot, you want to do something so you make it twice as bad. Just stop and wait a little bit. And if you say, okay, this was wrong, say, okay, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. I'm sorry, I missed it. I'm sorry. And then go back to where you were when things were okay. If you can. Now, there's probably some situations that I, I can't get in my head, but I just want, I want to say right now, there's probably situations where you can't go back to where you were, so you've got to go from where you are. Sometimes you can go back where you were. Sometimes. Sometimes you just got to go on from where you're at. One of the other things I think we lose if we don't wait on the Lord is we lose our peace. That's one of the greatest signs, I think, of God's will and waiting on him is his peace. That a lot of times I got to wait till I get to the place where I have peace. And I, I, I get at peace with myself. I get at peace with God. I'm just at peace. It's okay. It's okay. But sometimes if we don't wait on the Lord, we're going to lose our peace. We could lose it. You know, I don't think God's obligated to keep me peaceful when I'm out of his will. You know, we, we talk about the peace of God and we kind of think that, well, the peace of God will go with me no matter what. Well, I want to tell you something. I think the peace of God goes with us when we're in his will. I think when we're out of his will, I think then you can lose his peace. I don't think he's obligated to give me peace. You know, I think God would say, well, you didn't do what I told you, so, you know, you're on your own. I always say that's the worst thing that can happen. The worst thing that can happen to a people or a nation when God says, okay, if that's how you want it, you're on your own. And I believe he does that. He'll say, okay, you know, help yourself. Help yourself. If you're so smart, you figure it out. I don't, God don't talk like that, but I do. You know, but you know, I think that's kind of what he says. You know, just figure it out. So we can lose our peace. Isaiah 26, 3. It says, You will keep him in perfect peace, 
whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. God will keep us in perfect peace when our mind is kept on him. We think his thoughts. We think what he says. We think what he does because we trust in him. Because we trust in him. So we trust in him while we wait. While we wait. Sometimes waiting is an issue of trust. Sometimes we're not waiting. We're just doing a whole lot of things on our own. You know? But when you have to wait, you're like, okay, Lord, what do you want? What's next? What are we supposed to do? How do we handle this? You know, Abraham got impatient. He got impatient. He had no children till he was 99 by Sarah. 99 years old. He waited. But he come impatient. He took action. And his action got negative results. And it caused conflict forever. Still, to this day, we're still suffering from that decision. We're still, that's, that's the whole, that's the whole Arabs hate Jews to this day. You know, it's, it's, it's established, it's set. One of the things I believe the Lord says to us when we wait is that he will direct our steps. He'll direct our steps. He told Abraham, he says, leave your land and go to some place, but I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you where. I'm not going to tell you where it is. What does that mean? That means that you just need to start going and I'll direct your steps. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. And usually, very seldom does God give us the whole map. Very seldom. Very seldom. Part of the reason is because if I saw the whole map, I may not go. If I saw the end of the story, I may not go. If I saw everything that was going to happen, I go, oh, I don't think I want to do that. I don't think a lot of times we got faith for what's coming down the road. We should have faith to take the next step. The next step. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. And so then sometimes we will begin to move when we don't know. We don't know. We just obey and take a step. And we wait on the Lord to show us the next step. I believe, I believe that God, he's always faithful. He's always faithful. You know, today, today is an interesting day. It's the day of Pentecost. And I, you know, obviously didn't have a Pentecost sermon. But today is a day of Pentecost. It's a day when God sent his spirit upon the believers. It's interesting that in Matthew 28, 28, Jesus, one of his last words to his disciples was, go make disciples. Okay, now for most of us, when you say go, what do we do? We go. You go. That was his command. Go make disciples. Interestingly enough, in, in Acts, Acts 1 4, he says, Wait until I send my Holy Spirit. My question is, you know, it's not my, I, don't, I know what happened. I understand the story. But my question would have been, Do you want me to go or do you want me to wait? Well, which is it? Go, wait? You know, does God ever do that? Does God ever, you know, God say, Well, go uh, and wait? Like, come on. I'll, uh, let's go. Let's get it, you know. Sometimes, sometimes we have to remember that we don't go in our own strength. He never expected us to go and make disciples in our own strength. But he said, I'll give you the power to do it. And then he sent his Holy Spirit. And then the disciples went after they waited. Then they went, but they went in his power. I believe there's a lot of times when we hear go and, you know, tell me to go and I'm going. I mean, I'm sorry. You know, I know people think I'm so patient. I have a lot of patience. I really do. But there's certain things, certain things that I'm, I'm pretty, let's get going. Let's get going. 
people, I'm, I'm a hard read, so help yourself. But, you know, Mary's still trying to figure me out. But, but you know, but uh, you tell me to go, and I'm like, let's go now. I tend to be ahead of God. That's my, that's my nature. Tell me to go, and I'm going. And he'll say, well, I told you to go, but I didn't tell you when. And the priest will go, oh, wait a minute. I need to wait. So when, when it comes to this whole thing of waiting on the Lord, I think some of it is our personalities, okay? I believe there's some Christians God would say, go, come on, I told you to go. Because they're still waiting. And they've been waiting for 30 years. You know what they told me when I was a kid? Wait broke, wait broke the wagon down. That's what I was taught. So, you, you know, it was put in my nature. You just didn't wait. You know, you go. Let's get her done. And then, you know, you finally realize, okay, I need to trust the Lord. I need to wait on him because if I go like I want to go, I'm going to get out there. I'm going to try to get this done on my own strength and it's probably not going to go so well. And so the Lord says, look, go, but I want you to know you have to wait on me. You have to wait on me because let's do it my way and I'll give you the strength to do it. I believe it's an ongoing lesson. If you've got it figured out, if you've got it mastered, God bless you. You know, I'm pretty convinced I'm going to work on this the rest of my life. I'm going to work on it the rest of my life. You know, that I'm going to, okay, Lord, you know, you said go. You know, he told Abraham, go. But it took 24 years to see a lot of that come to pass. You know, a lot of lessons, a lot of things to go through. And so the thing we need to learn is waiting on the Lord. Know when it is and know when to go. Know when to go. And wait on him because we need his strength. We need his strength. A lot of times if I go, I'm going to go in my own strength because I'm going to go, come on, let's go. Let's and now, just to confuse you, there's times when you need to go. There's times, you know, if the building's on fire and somebody says go, you say, well, now, wait a minute. Let's think about this a little bit, you know? I mean, there's times when go means get going. That it's not, well, let's wait, you know. But we have to hear and know what the Lord's telling us. What's he saying? What's he telling you? Wait on him. Trust him. Know that he's going to go with you and give you the strength to do what he's asked you to do. Let's all stand. If you have need for prayer, the prayer team will be up front as soon as I dismiss. And uh, Oh, yeah, we're going to take up an offering. Thank you, Jim. Another hand signal. God bless hand signals. Uh, if you want to sit down, go ahead and sit down. Uh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to take up the offering for the um, towards the ramp in uh, Kentucky, and uh, we're doing this in honor of Bob and and all that he's done and meant. So, so let's let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have to to go down to Kentucky and put this ramp in, Lord. We we thank you for for Bob's. Uh, going before us and preparing ways and, and uh, introducing us to the folks in Kentucky. We thank you for all that he's done, for the lives that he's touched, Lord. And so in honor of him, we, we do this, Lord. We thank you for that. Lord, just bless this offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I know, I know CP, a friend of Bob's that goes with us down there. I know he's making a couple of three plaques that he's going to put up in different places. One of them's in Kentucky in honor of Bob and all he's done. He's making up some kind of a plaque. So I think, well, he's not, we're not sure he's going with us. But anyway, we'll see that eventually. So, okay. Oh, did he leave yesterday morning? Oh, good. The lumber's going. <laughs> Oh, good, good. Well, that's good news. So the lumber will be there when we get there, so that's good. 
because <laughs> we were just hoping so. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. Okay. Well, let's all stand and we'll pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have to give and for your blessings. Lord, we just thank you that uh, you're always in charge. And Lord, just help us to wait on you. Lord, because we need you. Lord, we need your strength. We need your guidance. We need your direction. So, Lord, we wait on you. We trust you. We look to you. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, I pray if there's anyone that has a need for prayer that you just encourage them to come up this morning and, and let the prayer team pray with them as soon as I dismiss. Lord, we just thank you for being with us. Lord, just uh, bless each and every one that's here. We just thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen.